There are many wondrous sights in Iceland. Stunning waterfalls, rainbow mountains, icy glaciers intermingled with the black and brown remnants of volcanic eruptions, both ancient and recent. But as you travel around this island, you start to wonder, where are all the trees? Once upon a time, this North Atlantic island was covered in vibrant birch forests. So what happened? Well, we happened. I mean, not us personally, it was the Vikings. We'll tell you the story of how Iceland's ancient forests disappeared and what's being done to try and bring them back. Do, 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 do. Today, you can drive for hours in Iceland without seeing a single tree, and the country is considered the least densely forested in all of Europe. Forests of any size are so rare here that we heard this popular Icelandic joke more than once. Hey mom, how do you find near a home if you get stuck in Icelandic forest? You stand up. But history suggests the island wasn't always like this. Fossil records tell a tale of forests that thrived approximately 5 to 15 million years ago during the Neogene period. Now things were really different back then with a warmer climate and an island that probably looked a lot like modern day California with trees that included varieties like sequoia, magnolia, and sassafras. Likely sometime near the end of this period, Iceland's climate started to get a bit colder and boreal type forests emerged featuring pine, spruce, birch, and alder. But still, lots of trees, so what happened? Glaciers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving myself insane. It all started with the ice. Glaciers were an early challenger to the success of Icelandic forests. As the island cooled and experienced successive periods of glaciation, the flora became less diverse. Pine trees managed to survive for a while before disappearing, but today the only forest forming native tree species is the downy birch. You can also find rowan, aspen, and willow, but these are rare. And none of the species that grow on the island get much larger than a big shrub. About 15 meters in height is the maximum you'll find here. The trees are really more like bushes. Shrubs? What's the difference between a bush and a shrub? I don't know. Do any of you know? Tell us in the comments. While the glaciers certainly influenced the kind of trees you find in Iceland, it was the Vikings that really changed the quantity of trees found here. In the late 9th century, seafaring Vikings from Norway came ashore and settled Iceland as its first human inhabitants. When they arrived, nearly 25% of the island was covered in vibrant birch forests. But the Vikings had other plans for these trees, and they did what all Iron Age peoples did. These were agrarian societies, and they needed cleared space to make way for fields to to grow their hay and their barley, and land for grazing livestock like sheep, creatures whose grazing behavior actually prevents birch woods from regenerating in the landscape. In addition to agriculture, the settlers also needed timber for building and charcoal to power their forges. The birch forests along the coast didn't stand a chance, and the island was mostly deforested within the span of three centuries. The effects are starkly beautiful, drawing in tourists and movie crews who enjoy the otherworldly landscape. But hidden in this beauty are also some devastating consequences. The absence of trees combined with ash and rock from frequent volcanic eruptions has caused severe soil erosion and makes growing anything very challenging. With little or no vegetation to anchor the soil, farming and grazing have become nearly impossible. Strong winds exacerbate the problem, leading to damaging sandstorms. In response to these challenges, Iceland established reforestation and soil conservation efforts in the late 19th century. But wood remained an important resource until the mid-20th century when birchwood numbers hit a historic low, covering less than 1% of the island. It was around this time when protection efforts and planting initiatives really started in earnest. Reforesting more of Iceland's countryside brings benefits beyond agricultural and sandstorm prevention. Trees absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, helping Iceland work towards its climate goal. Despite Iceland's use of geothermal energy and hydropower, its per capita greenhouse gas emissions are high due to transportation and heavy industries. So planting trees is seen as a crucial step in mitigating climate change. And in 2018, the government made afforestation one of its priorities in its climate action plan. But there's more to this story. It turns out that Iceland's only native tree, the birch, isn't considered a productive species for certain goals like carbon sequestration and timber production. So diversity is key. In places like Hafnasadr in southwest Iceland, authorities are working tirelessly to turn rocky landscapes into thriving forests. Their secret weapon? Trolls? Mm. A Norse got a thunder and ash forestation? No, imported species. 
They're planting North American conifer trees like lodgepole pine with the aim of establishing the soil and protecting nearby towns from dust storms. Since 2015, between four and three million. <laughs> four and three and two. Since 2015, between three and four million trees have been planted in Iceland. But it's still a small fraction compared to the other countries. Teeny meeny. Is it a small tree? Like a shrub? No. A bush? No, it's just a small number. But the warming climate is actually helping tree growth in Iceland, since low temperatures and cool summers have historically suppressed forest growth. It's a paradox that reminds us of the delicate and complex balance between nature and climate. So, as Iceland works to bring back its lost trees, we're reminded of nature's resilience, the wonder and power of a forest full of tall trees, and human dedication to protect this planet we call home. Thanks for watching. Peace out.